Hello everybody, my name is Hajime Sugiyama from Mitsubishi Electric and I'm an industrial IoT evangelist. Today, as part of my IoT for Everybody series, I'd like to talk about manufacturing in the new normal and the practical use of cobots. Tough times continues, don't they? But if you look at the factory, what I think is the most hard part about it is that demand is going up and down. When I talk about down, I mean there comes a lockdown and suddenly you have to stop production or maintain it at a very, very low level. It's very tough. On the other hand, sometimes demand goes really, really up. For instance, you have this sudden urge to produce face masks for safety or maybe PC devices for using them at your home office. So it's a really up-down situation and the factory has to adjust to this. We live in a world of uncertainty, but the problem is I think this world is going to continue. It's going to take a while till things get to normal. In that text, this world dynamic capability is becoming very, very popular. What is dynamic capability? Dynamic capability is the firm's ability to integrate, build, and reconfigure internal and external competences to address rapidly changing environments. And that's what we are right now. As a manufacturer, we have to be able to address rapidly changing environments. And that's why a lot of people are looking at these type of flexible manufacturing to be able to adjust to these situations. I mean, at the end, what we always tell our factory staff is the most important thing is to be lean and flexible. I mean, you don't have this time to really ramp up production with new factory lines. You, know, you have to cope with the existing facilities you have right now. And in order to do that, your factory, at its core, has to be lean and flexible. And I think this is very, very important. So let's talk a little more about manufacturing in, new, in the new normal. And maybe I can share some experiences that we had in our own factories to cope with the COVID-19 virus. I think there's two major things you have to be aware in the new normal. First is physical distancing and contactless. And the second is shift management. Today, I'd like to mainly speak about this shift management. I mean, the biggest risk you have in the factory is someone gets infected by the virus and you have to isolate everybody or other people. You, know, you have to assure the physical safety of your people in the factory. So it usually results in a shutdown. But on the other hand, you, know, you have to keep manufacturing um, running. You, know, you have your duty as a supplier to the market to provide parts. So, and it's, it's really, really important to have a good balance between these two aspects. So the first thing in order not to spread the virus is physical distancing and also being contactless in order not to spread the virus. We're talking about like things like machining, automation, using AGVs and robots, because naturally, if the person is not handling the product, he has less risk to be infected. On the other hand, there's other things like intelligent, intelligent sensing that a lot of people are looking at. You think about it, and right now, a lot of people, you know, they're, with their human eyes, they're looking to see if products are good or no good. But if you can do this with the cool technology out there with cameras, you know, it would be a big plus. Plus, you lower the risk of infection. And other things is voice and face recognition. There's a lot of buttons on the factory floor. When you move a machine, when you want to press an e-stop, you need to press a button. But that's also a risk for infection. And by using these voice face recognition technologies, which has really become sophisticated and usable in the factory, I think these are going to help you maintain your physical distance. The other part is shift management. I'm going to talk in the next slide, but basically, if you are able to separate your shifts, and even if one shift is, has an issue, the other shift is still operational, meaning that you will be able to continue production. But there is this issue with shift management, meaning you're going to be able, you have to be able 
to run your factory with less people. In that perspective, these things, using robots, which is my main theme today, and these other facts become very, very important. Such so like multitasking and education. Because you're running the factory with less people, you need to educate people to do other tasks. The problem is, it's really difficult to teach people because you have to be aware of this physical distancing. And that's why technologies like AR and VR or online earn learning will be very, very important. Of course, there will be times that you'll not be able to have the right person on the factory floor when you need them if you're maintaining shifts. Those cases, these kind of remote maintenance capabilities are also becoming very, very important. And at the end, if you have a smart factory which can do predictive maintenance and tell you problems before they happen, that's the best. And that's something we definitely should aim for the future. Physical distancing. As I said, for instance, because this actually happened in our factory floor, you have a factory running with 10 people. But if one person gets the virus, you know, you'll have to isolate the other ones, not to spread the virus in your factory. So what you will do is you're creating two shifts. But because you are running a shift that had previously 10 people with five people, that means you have to do something in between. You know, they can't handle the work of two people. And that's why robots are becoming very, very closely looked at in the new normal. Of course, there's always the issue that you know, robots cannot replace all the things that humans do, so there's always a gap in between them. But with new technologies, we see this gap is becoming very, very smaller. I mean, you talk, a, you talk about sensing, like the eyes and touch, but sensor technology has come a far way, and they can replicate a lot of movements and vision that a human has. Communication with sensors and networks and data, you're able to communicate with each other better, better in the future. And logical thinking, I'm sure with the development in software and AI, it's going to do a very, very good job. So, and there's also some benefits that a robot has that a human being doesn't have, such like its workload tolerance. You know, they can do the same repetitive movement over and over for 24 hours without getting tired. And the other thing, which is the most important in the new normal, is it's safe. You know, if a robot is handling the product, assembling it, then you don't risk the risk of being infected with virus through touch is very, very smaller. So that's why I think due to reach recent uh, technology, technology advancements, that a robot can replace a lot, of, a lot of things that humans can do. Okay, let's talk about physical distancing in the factory. I mean, the first step everybody thinks, and the easiest, is to put these kind of partition screens in between. Okay, it's safe, you know, you can't touch each other, it's easier, but there's a big issue with this, as it lacks, as you restrict the movement of the human being. So because of this, he can't do multiple tasks at one time, and you know, he's in a very, very small area to work with. So it's not really good from a productivity point of view. Okay, then let's install some standard robots. But the issue with standard robots is they need safety functionality. So usually if you try to install a standard robot in a production line, you still need to have these kind of gates around it fences around the robot in order to ensure safety uh, for your people working in the factory. So this still restricts the movement and multitasking that this person needs to do in the factory. But this is the beauty of this new technology and becoming widely used in the factory, these cobots, you know. Because of these cobots, it, they don't have these safety issues that a standard robot has. You don't need the fences. So the restriction of the worker is less and he can move around more freely and still has the benefit um, of the things that you, we explained in the previous slide about you know, uh, repetitive movement and most of all, safety. One characteristic of a cobot that's really great is they are what you call light devices. What do I mean with, by light devices? I mean, they're not only human friendly, a human being can work next, side by side next to them, 
but it's also very, very quick and easy to deploy, and there's no need for extensive robotics knowledge. Everybody thinks, hey, just install a robot. But in reality, it's not so easy. You need to know how to teach the robot, and you need to know, have the knowledge of the camera, so a certain amount of robot technology is necessary. But these cobots that are out in the world are very, very easy to use and easy to program, so you don't really need this extensive training. And this is very, very important because a lot of companies are planning to install these robots to keep their employees safe, but of course you don't have a lot of time. And I'm sure the technology surrounding cobots will only develop even better. I mean, one of the issues is the speed and accuracy of the cobots, but by combining this with artificial intelligence, and that's exactly what we're trying to do now, we're going to be able to more quickly and more accurately pick and place while still assuring the safety with the human beings. But I also want everybody to be realistic, you know. Please always take a practical approach. Is the solution you need temporary? Are you only going to do this for one month? Or maybe it's going to be permanent for three years after this? How much do you have your budget? I mean, do you have the engineers to engineer the robot or the cobot? And how quick do you need this installation? You have to put these factors inside your mind be before you make a decision if you're going to use a cobot or not. Because sometimes the answer is a quick partition screen. I mean, there's a lot of issues in also our factories that we figured out, okay, we're only going to use this for maybe two weeks, so let's just cope with the partition screen, and let's think about cobots and robots for the future. But, you know, a lot of people are looking a step ahead, what's after COVID, and how the factory will develop. And they're, you know, if you're going to put this as a uh, permanent solution, or you want to raise the engineering skill of your factory employees, maybe installing a cobot right ahead is your right choice. So, but I think it's important to be very, very practical because at the end, it's safety and it's also ROI, return investment. Okay, takeaways. I think everybody, please remember dynamic capability and keeping lean flexible. These are the keywords, physical distancing, shift management, of course, employee safety is a uh, priority. Robots and humans, we've come a far way of uh, being able to replicate what humans are doing. And please consider cobots because they're very, very light devices and easy installs of the factory. So, and at the end, let's be practical. Okay, today I talked about manufacturing, but of course we're doing a lot of interesting things in physical distance engineering side as well. I mean, we made this face guard in uh, Mitsubishi Electric, you know, for our employees. Um, we wanted to make them by ourselves for usage in our factories because, you know, these are needed by the medical staff that are fighting every day for us in the world. So. But in order to do this, you know, we did all, used all these kind of remote engineering capabilities and actually we were able to make the first prototype with seven day, within seven days from IDEA and also put in the mass production line in 25 days. So I think the capability is endless and all these kind of interesting technologies are coming into place from this uh, situation. So maybe sometime I'll be able to discuss this in detail also. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. We have a lot more on my YouTube Mitsubishi Electric Factory Automation channel, latest industry IoT trends for everybody. So if you have time, take a look. And thank you very much for listening and keep safe. See you again. Thank you for watching today. If it was interesting, please press the like button. We have much more on our SNS and YouTube channels, so please subscribe. See you again.